Hello, everyone. November 4th, 2021, Science published this paper called SARS-CoV Vaccine Protection and Deaths Amongst U.S. Veterans During 2021. This is a pretty important paper because um, it has a really large data set. What these people did is they looked at all the COVID tests done in, under the Veterans Health Administration, which turned um, the most recent uh, COVID tests which turned out to be about 800,000, so that's a large number, and they looked at the vaccine efficiency against infection um, as it declined over time. And this is important because vaccine efficiency against infection is no longer being tracked in the United States. Um, breakthrough infections are not really being recorded. Instead, the CDC is only recording um, breakthrough uh, deaths, um, so not they're not... Uh, they're not looking at infection. So if you care about infection, this is kind of the best data set there is from the United States. And what they did is basically they took all the veterans that are being treated at the Veterans Health Administration. And whenever they came in with their um, for any kind of COVID testing, they looked at the most recent COVID test and decided saw if it was positive or negative. And then they also know whether the veteran is vaccinated or not vaccinated and then they can tell and so the vaccine efficiency over time declines um, and you can see right here um, so starting in uh, March and going to about September you see that the Moderna line is the highest so vaccine efficiency started around 90 percent and it declines to about 58 percent and then Pfizer starts, you know, high 80s and declines to about 45%. And then um, Janssen starts in the high 80s and drops to about 15%, so quite low. Um, and then if you look at infection rates, um, the black line is unvaccinated, so they, they have higher infection rates. And then next is Janssen, next is Pfizer, next is... Uh, Moderna, and you see that the um, the infection rate goes um, went down precipitously starting around um, around July, August. That's when that's when the Delta variant came on. So infection rates were not so. Basically, uh, 100 means you weren't infected. So infection-free survival means as soon as someone gets infected, this, this line drops a little bit. So there wasn't, you know, all the vaccinated people just like were pretty flat. They weren't getting infected. And then when Delta hit, they all started getting infected. And then um, the uh, unvaccinated people, pretty similar. I mean, they're getting infected more often. But then when um, Delta hit, they're getting um, a lot more. And then lastly, they're looking at risk of death. This is an interesting graph, and um, I have some questions about it. Basically, it shows if, so this line is your risk of death um, if you're unvaccinated. Um, so your risk of death is about 97% if you're unvaccinated. Um, and then if, if, you're, if you're unvaccinated and you get COVID. It's 97%. If you're unvaccinated and you're COVID negative, then it's like 98.5%. If you're fully vaccinated and COVID negative on the PCR test, you're 98.5%. And then if you're fully vaccinated and you're uh, PCR negative, then you're almost 99%. This is death from any cause, not death just from COVID. The question I have about this, which is interesting, is they're saying that unvaccinated people that are COVID negative on the test have a higher death rate than vaccinated people that are COVID negative. Uh, why would that be the case? Um, is it because they're more likely to die of all causes? Are the unvaccinated people unhealthier overall? Their paper doesn't specify, but this is an interesting thing because what you would expect to see, I mean, what I would have expected to see on this graph would be to see the unvaccinated PCR negative, uh, which is this black line, be at the same place as the fully vaccinated PCR negative, which is this red line. So this black line and this red line, they should match up like this because they're both COVID negative. 
And the vaccine status should only have an impact on deaths by COVID, not on other deaths. But this is saying that overall deaths, um, the unvaccinated people are dying at slightly higher rates. I mean, it's like 0.3%, but it is slightly higher rates than uh, overall. So I don't know what this discrepancy is. This discrepancy may be just that, you know, there's lots of possible explanations, but from the paper, you can't glean what it is because they don't tell you what the data says. One possibility is, is that the unvaccinated people are just unhealthier, so more likely to die of, you know, heart attack or something else, or they are take on more risky behaviors, you know, they're more likely to die in a car accident or something. But um, yeah, there's a, that's kind of an interesting thing. Okay, so that's the take-home message. Take-home message is that vaccine efficiency is dropping. Uh, it's unclear from the study, is it dropping because just um, antibody levels decline over time? Or is it because the Delta variant is just more infectious and just not as effective against the Delta variant? Or the most likely explanation, it is some combination of both. Um, and that, that the uh, vaccine efficiency of Moderna is the best, then Pfizer and then Janssen is the worst. If you, according to this paper, if we believe the data of this paper, if you have a Janssen vaccine these days, you're essentially not very well protected. Your efficiency is only about 15%. That, that's not good. Um, and then for the other two, it's about 50%, plus or minus, a little bit. All right, so that's what the paper shows. In order to see what the methodologic weaknesses of the paper are, you need to go look at... Um, the um, the methods. So if, here's the supplementary materials, and we can look at the methods. Okay, so what they did is they looked at uh, the VA records to identify vaccine status. So they knew the vaccine status, and then they're saying fully vaccinated is two doses of Pfizer, Moderna, and one dose of Janssen, and then they looked at SARS-CoV-2 infection was defined as detection of SARS-CoV-2 on most recent PCR test. Okay, so they only looked at the most recent PCR test. So when you look at the methods, you just have to think of like all the crazy things that could happen that could throw this thing off. The scenarios I'm going to say are not likely, but possible and could throw off this study. One is they're only looking at the most recent PCR test. If, for example, someone had multiple positive tests in the past, yet their most positive, most recent test was negative, it would look like either if they were in the vaccine group that the vaccine was working great, or if they were in the um, unvaccinated group that, you know, not being vaccinated was working out great for them. Um, so you could have a scenario where the most recent test is negative, and in this study, they only capture the most recent test. So that's kind of one thing that's a little off about it. Then um, the other thing that I saw in this study is that they have no data. They have no data that looks at the demographics of vaccinated versus unvaccinated people. Like you know this. Ideally, I would have liked to seen a graph like this with this axis not being negative or positive PCR test, but being vaccinated and unvaccinated, which then we could see if there's any differences in female or male, uh, his, you know, ethnicity, race, age, comorbidity score. We don't know. They, there could be completely different demographics of the unvaccinated and vaccinated groups. And if they're not similar then you re it's not a fair comparison to compare the two groups. So the vaccinated and unvaccinated groups should be relatively similar in age, gender, ethnicity, and comorbidities. But there is no, uh, I, I looked through this entire supplementary materials, and there is no table that says that. And then lastly, uh, and, they, and they talk about this in their um, discussion, the other weakness is, is they're just testing people that voluntarily come in to get tested. They're the only ones that are being captured in this data. So if someone is a veteran and they're getting tested at a local hospital, they would not be captured by this data. And let's say like all the, you know, just to throw off the data completely, let's say all the unvaccinated people went to their local hospital when they felt sick and they only came to the VA and got tested if they were having some elective surgical procedure. Then all the positive tests would be captured in outside hospital, which are not captured by this paper, and that would throw off the data completely. Also, 
um, if vaccinated people and unvaccinated people have totally different exposure rates, then um, you can't calculate vaccine efficiency this way. The, you can only calculate vac vaccine efficiency this way if the, the two groups, the vaccinated and unvaccinated people, are similar in their demographic profile and they have similar exposures. So let's say that the vaccinated people are like, well, I'm vaccinated. I don't have to be careful. I can go to all the parties I want, hang out with um, anyone, just you know, go around hugging strangers and um, just expose themselves a lot more, then the vaccine efficiency will look less. Or on the contrary, if unvaccinated people are like, you know, I don't need vaccination, I'm healthy, I'm not gonna wear a mask, I'm just gonna hang out with all kinds of people, go to concerts and, you know, just uh, expose themselves a lot more, that also skews the data. So um, I think it's a large enough data set that you're getting good data out of this. And it is pretty clear that um, vaccine efficiency is going down. That's been corroborated in multiple other studies coming out of like Israel, UK, Qatar. Um, and so that is true. But I don't, this data set is not clean. And looking at all these papers, it just makes you realize how clean the data sets from the phase three vaccine trials are. I mean, those things are just so clean. Um, this, you know, it, it's hard to capture retrospective data that is um, very well randomized between all the test groups. So I, while I believe the study is very good and gives us good information, there are several things to consider. Um, which we discussed in this paper. So, okay, I guess I hope that was helpful for you guys. Um, if you have any co comments or questions, please put them below. Thanks.